All right, what's up, guys? So some of you might have heard of the ART Pro VLA2 compressor. It's one of the cheapest analog compressors on the market, and it's actually a really well-built unit. Um, it's quite cool, um, but it does come with cheap Chinese tubes. It's a valve leveling amplifier, and at the output, they have a pair of cheap no-name brand Chinese tubes. So a few months ago, I swapped those out for electro harmonics tubes, which are um, Russian-made tubes. I swapped them out for the same rating, same type of, same model of tube. And basically after switching them out, I've been playing around with it for the last few months. And I'm gonna split this video up into two parts. The first part being just um, how you can switch out the tubes and how you can balance the left and the right um, input or output gain, uh, output gain, sorry. Because when I had my compressor sent to me, I couldn't use it for a little while until I opened it up and actually tune the left and right output because they would never match. Um, so this video is going to be kind of how to match the left and right output levels as well as switch your tubes while you're in there. And then in the next part of the video, I'm actually going to give you the examples of the before with the Chinese tubes and the after with the exact same settings and the same sources. So that's going to be the second part of the video, but today we're just going to hop back to those clips that I shot a few months ago um, when I opened up the compressor and swapped out the tubes. So I hope you guys like it. Stay tuned and let's go back in time and check out that tube swap. So first things first, of course, we're gonna take it out of our rack and then we're gonna start to remove all the screws that we can see on the exterior of the case. So there's some on the front, the back, the sides, the top, and then you'll be able to pull off this kind of top layer and the bottom part is going to stay there. So you can see the kind of top part fits over the bottom part by a little bit. There's some overlap and then they screw into each other. So once you get all those screws off, you just remove this top panel like this. And then we can see a really clean PCB and wiring job. These are the tubes with little um, housing that pretty much turn in and screw once they click in. Here I'm using an oven mitt glove because I had kind of been using the compressor to record some final tests before I switched the tubes. And uh, they get a little bit hot, so just to make sure I didn't burn myself. So you turn them. Uh, they click once and then you pull them up and then it exposes the two tubes. So to pull them out, you're going to have to shake them and kind of pull them quite hard actually. So you're going to want to hold down the case. And I let it cool down here and then I was working without my gloves because they're a bit slippery. So you're going to want to pull until it clicks and then you can take it out. Just kind of wiggle it. it takes a, a good pull here. Second one I had done um, ahead of time. So we can see these are the no-name brand Chinese ones that come stock in the compressor. And there's the Electro Harmonics. So there are also 12 AT7 tubes, but they're by Electro Harmonics made in Russia. So all we have to do is match up the pins, plug them right in, and we're good to go. So you just want to make sure that they've clicked in properly. You do this for both and then you put the metal casing back over. You can see how the slot works. So push it down. There's a little bit of kind of like a spring loaded feeling. You twist it to the right, it clicks in. And that's basically how you switch your tubes. You don't have to do anything else except level match them, which we're going to be doing as well. So here we're powering on the compressor. 
we've plugged it back in now that it's safe to plug it back in so here we can see it's peaking at minus 3.2 on the i believe it's the left or the right channel right now on the actual hardware it's on the So now we're going to use the right channel, and we'll see where that one peaks with the same source. And it's peaking at minus 2.7. So we're going to try and match those. So next to the casing to protect the tubes, we can see there's this attenuator trim. So I'm just using a shish kebab stick, like a big toothpick. and putting that in there and I'm going to turn counterclockwise to lower the gain because that one is minus 2.7 and we need it to go to minus 3.2 to match the left side. So it needs to come down a little bit more. So like I was saying, I should have been using um, a sine wave. I was using a kick at this point, but I test it with the sine wave afterwards. Um, but it's a little bit easier to just use a sine wave the whole way through. So you'll see that after. So now we can see it's matched to minus 3.2, so all good. Here I'm using a test generator, like I said, a sine wave, and I'll test it at, um, you know, maybe the two different frequencies. Minus 13. So we can see we're at minus 13. So just double checking with the noise, which is a constant pitch. Um, and then here we are testing it. Perfectly level matched. So we'll just burn in the tubes. And after that, I'm gonna record the extra examples to give you guys some before and after of comparing these Chinese tubes with these new electro harmonics ones. So I hope you guys liked the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.